I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I've seen a lot of posts recently on social media with questions like how can I make scales more fun? How to make scales practice more fun? And I have to admit that such titles and such topics do alarm me. And I do think that if you're perhaps asking that question, you are destined for disappointment. And I'm not sure that it bodes well for success. I suppose the topic in hand is let's define the word fun. And I do think that the word fun suggests a kind of a superficial, frivolous pleasure that doesn't require much input or dedication. And I think if that's what we determine fun to mean, kind of a, a passing fancy of enjoyment, then, you know, I don't think scales are going to be fun. I don't think music practice, playing music will be fun. Like, like many other things, is, is learning a language, is reading a book, is learning to sew, is knitting, is learning to knit. Are, they, are these things fun? And I would suggest that the answer is no. Now, of course, I don't think that playing music, I don't think that playing scales is dreary. I don't think it's a dismal affair at all. You know, I enjoy music. I enjoy all things regarding relating to music. I enjoy scales particularly, actually. I do find them very therapeutic and I find them quite calming in their own sense but that's only after having learned them there is hard work before that however they are enjoyable they are rewarding they are satisfying so i do enjoy them in a sort of an accepted term of enjoyment an accepted understanding of that word but that only comes after a certain amount of hard work and effort and yes no doubt struggle and hardship to begin with and it troubles me that we are perhaps concerned with making things fun you know and I don't think that's the road to success really I'm reminded of when I was studying for my grade 8 piano many many years ago and I have here a list of the photocopies that I took. So I wrote out by hand all the different permutations of what to play for each scale. You know, the dominant sevenths, the arpeggios, um, the inversions, the chromatic scales, the contrary motion scales, the scales in thirds. And I wrote this sort of master copy out. <coughs> it's a little bit alarming because it's got age spots. It's sort of going a bit antique looking. I think, oh that long ago really really and then I photocopied it I remember going to the local library because you know we didn't have printers and copiers and things at home and it was 10p a copy and I got 12 copies and then just in the gap wrote down every semitone of the scale of the chromatic scale so that every key was covered and I worked out that when it uh, sort of when you added up all of the permutations of each different key it, it went into the hundreds of possibilities that there were to practice you know that was stretching the point you know thinking legato staccato hands uh, together similar motion contrary motion and so on but nevertheless there were a lot and i don't think i would have said that was fun but there was certainly a a satisfaction in digging into the topic and getting it under my fingers and I know for a fact that I was not a model student and know that I spent far too many hours sitting drinking cappuccinos and eating chocolate cake with who was to become my husband at the time we spent far too many hours sitting chatting instead of doing perhaps the things that we should have done but nevertheless, I did do it and I did enough to stand me in good stead so that those things are still under my fingers now. And I have a deep satisfaction and a great sense of reward knowing that I've done that. And I do enjoy rattling up and down the piano or on the flute playing some scales. And they're so important. But that doesn't mean it's got to be like a, 
a nasty tasting medicine that will taste horrible and will dread it and it just won't do us any good in that sense. You know, it's it's hard work, but it's rewarding. I'm not sure that it's fun though. And there are times when I do have a great time playing music. You know, if I play a duet with my friend or, you know, if you play your flute in an orchestra, you can't beat that live music. Even singing at choir, you know, I do enjoy that. But I don't think it's necessarily accurate to define that as fun because, you know, when we're going over the same phrase for the third time, for the fourth time, and some of us still haven't got the timing right, or we've not pronounced the words right. It's like, oh dear, you know. But then afterwards, the results of that effort and labor does make me feel that I'm so thrilled and I feel so satisfied. And I think if we start chasing this idea that everything should be fun, I do think we're on the road to destruction if we're not careful, because some things, aren't necessarily great fun to begin with in that superficial frothy kind of enjoyment but that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing and you know there are questions of how can I make scales more fun I'm not sure that you can make them more fun but you can certainly squeeze so much out of your practice time when you're doing your scales you know so you can play them just standard then you can play them in dotted rhythms you can play them legato you can play them staccato you can play them piano you can play them forte and if you think if you really think you've got your scales down and you think yep I absolutely know this then just pop the metronome on and think in twos and you know that really does raise any little insecurities bubbling right to the top and you think I've got it and then you think nope I haven't stayed in the dead center of the beat that is really hard and and it's good to rise to that challenge and think, oh no I'm gonna have to practice a little bit more because I thought I'd got it and that's not quite right now and then then you do get it and you think yes I've sorted it and that will never ever go away once you've got that foundation of learning it's it's so deeply satisfying and it's so rewarding but it's hard one you know and there's a lot of work that goes in that build up to then enjoying the fruits of your labor and i know that if, like with a woodwind instrument for example on the flute if you can play your scales the pieces become so much easier because you've got those notes in your sort of embouchure, you've got the range of the notes under your fingers and in your mouth as it were. You know what kind of lip pressure you're going to need to get the correct air speed and you know how to control your lungs for that particular note. You know what it's going to sound like, you know the effort that's required to create that note. And it, you've done it with your scales and so when you come to your pieces it's there you've got it you've got it sorted and that is such a great feeling to think yeah i've worked and the results of that work mean now that this piece is going to fall under my fingers so much easier now and then i am so thrilled to finally be playing this piece of music that i've always wanted to play the same is true with arpeggios if you've practiced your arpeggios and you can see those shapes, say for example on the piano, if you can see those shapes under your fingers, just kind of without even thinking about it, just the, mu the muscle memory is there. You come to a piece of music, even sight reading becomes so much easier because so many of those shapes are the, the skeleton structure of every piece of music that you're going to play. And so if you know your scales, you know your arpeggios, those shapes are already in your fingers and so you come to a piece of music and you can react because it's already there in your system and that is so good to feel that benefit and that improvement to your playing but I don't think it's what I would say is fun. There's a time and a place for some light-hearted, superficial, frothy, frivolous fun, yes definitely, but I don't think many things in life that are worth having are achieved in that way. I don't mean it's a dismal, dreadful thing. I don't mean it should be dreary. 
I love music, I love my subject, I love playing, I love working at it, and yes, sometimes you may end up throwing the book across the room because it's just tough and you can't get it. And you sort of take a break and regroup and pull it back and slow it down and sort it out. And there is a great deal of satisfaction in knowing that you've overcome those hurdles. And it's not been easy in this particular section, for example, this one bit that you've struggled on, but I've got it sorted now and I'm so pleased and you can sit back and enjoy the fruits of your labor and it's so rewarding and satisfying and now comes the time to enjoy the effort that you've put in. You can enjoy the fruits of your labor, but I'm not sure that fun is the right word to use. So I think we just need to be careful in the language that we use to look at how we want to pursue these goals that we have, whether it's hobby, any hobby. Yes, I'm talking about music here, but I don't think there are many things in life that we are achieving that are of lasting value that will be achieved by methods which are fun. And I just think we need to be careful, it does concern me. I'd be interested to know your thoughts. Do let me know in the comments what you think. Perhaps, perhaps you have a different definition to the word that I do, but that's my understanding. And I just think we need to be careful with the way that we ask these questions, otherwise we're just gonna be disappointed. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye.